So if you've been shopping for muzzle brakes, you can see that there's all kinds of different caliber selections you can choose from, from say a 223 all the way up to a 338 Lapua. What happens when you go onto a website and there's nothing available in the caliber you're shooting? Does it really matter if you go up to a 308 or a 338 size brake? Well, we're gonna test that today and see what happens with the accuracy. And then we're gonna go out and put it on the recoil rig and see if it affects the recoil. But just remember that you can't go the other way when you are doing this. So if you have a 338, you definitely do not wanna go and shoot a 223 brake. It will not be good. Yeah, that totally blew it up. Um... We are MDT. We design, test, and create precision rifle chassis and accessories to help you shoot better. Okay, so we have a 223 uh, rifle set up here that we're gonna test without a muzzle brake first. And then we have our comp brake that we have set up in a 223 configuration, a 6.5, a 308, and a 338 configuration. So we're gonna see what it does for accuracy downrange at 100 meters here. So to compare the brakes against each other, we're gonna go and shoot three five round groups. We're also gonna go and measure the speed of the round as well, see if the pressure difference from the muzzle brake is gonna affect what kind of speed we're getting out of it and the consistency of that speed. Okay, so with the no brake on, you can see that it was kind of stringy uh, for a couple of these groups and then one group that was pretty good. Uh, this is why you should never just shoot one group because this might have been the first group we shot and it would have shown us really, really good results. Overall, not great, but also the numbers on this ammo wasn't fantastic though either. So now we shot the group, the six mil slash two, two, three break on. You can see the groups have tightened up a little bit on this as well. So pretty good group, probably averaging right around three quarters of an inch, but not fantastic. So like a little bit tighter group than that with this factory ammo. So we shot the 6.5 brake on here now. About the same size group as the 6 mil brake. Once again, not fantastic groups, but okay. They seem to be shooting kind of what I would expect for this factory ammo. So this is a bit of a surprise. We threw the 308 brake on here. It's actually shot pretty decent. The groups have shot, probably shrunk down to, I'm gonna say almost three quarters of an inch average between the three groups. So not too bad. They definitely have tightened up a bit in vertically as well. So last one we threw on here was a 338. Once again, actually the groups are tightened up pretty good on this one again. So probably averaging right around three quarters of an MOA with this factory ammo. I'm gonna say that shooting all these groups are probably all gonna average out to right around the same area of say three quarters to one MOA. And with the numbers we were seeing with this ammo, that's probably what I would expect. Saying that the break is doing any influencing to these group sizes is hard to say for sure. So accuracy wise, you definitely can get away with moving up in diameter from the caliber you're shooting. So say if you're shooting a six mil, you could definitely move up to say a 308 or a 338. We're now gonna take it out to the recoil rig and see if the diameter of the hole does make a difference on the recoil reduction. So obviously it does make a big difference in the accuracy we're seeing downrange here. The way we're gonna measure the recoil on this rig is we have a digital tape measure set up on here that gets pushed back by the gun when it settles out to where it finishes we push the gun back forward and we measure what that distance was we're going to start off with the bare muzzle and work our way up to the largest size muzzle brake we have okay so we're throwing on the the 223 six mil brake so this is the one that generally you'd buy for a 223. We saw right around 125 millimeters of travel. I expect we'll probably see, I don't know, half or 60% of that for travel on this break. So that's around like 50% less recoil. We had right around the same amount of recoil reduction, which is not a big surprise because it's only you know, half uh, one caliber up from the six mil. So we'll see if um, this stays that consistent and where it goes from there. And we did see maybe a little bit less recoil reduction. Not really enough to say that it was a difference, at least in my opinion, unless we we're gonna shoot a lot more rounds to show that difference. Overall, it definitely was similar, but a little bit less. Why, I'm not really sure, but we're gonna to throw the 338 brake on here and see what happens now. Okay, so we definitely saw a little more recoil with that 338 brake, which is what we expected with the amount of gas likely going out around the bullet out the front of the brake. We're gonna go and throw together a nice fancy chart for you to show really the actual percentages. You'll be able to see that really there's not a lot of difference in the recoil reduction. You know, ideally you're gonna wanna go and select the brake that's appropriate size to your caliber within reason. You know, I would avoid probably putting a 338 brake on a 223 because you definitely are gonna lose some efficiency. But, you know, going up to say like a 308, it's probably gonna do you fine. You may see a little bit difference in your reticle. You know, if you're shooting at a very high level, but overall you're probably not gonna see a whole lot of difference. 